Okay then, I scored another one off the free pile. This is some kind of a, it's called a balanced spectrum. It's got a four lamp and it's a CFL type deal. In here it's got a nice CFL bulb. I don't know how old it is, but according to uh, the protocol, as usual, it works fine. Nothing wrong with it. The only problem with it is that it's probably was just too old and too ugly for the residents of Huntsville to want in their house anymore. It's kind of got a 90s vibe to it, so it might not even be that old. So I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use this for studio lighting so I can use this to kind of shed some more light when I'm filming things that I'm repairing inside or outside wherever. I use this, so works good. Remember, I go to all this trouble just for you guys. I search out these free things with you all in mind. <laughs> truck, we don't need no stinking truck. Ten bags of topsoil in there. That's what I do when I don't have any car projects or anything else going on. I work on the yard. I know, just like she does. But you know, it's good for you. It's good to work the soil. Make things look a little better. Keeps you out of trouble, you know. Remember. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. There's my little buddy back there. You see him? He's a chipmunk lives back. He lives under the he lives under the back stoop back there. He's got him a little cavern excavated out. But I've been working on this over here. This got a little bit of a low spot. Oh and I forgot to get something too. That's alright. A bit of a low spot. Well, what I was going to—I was going to get one of those diverters and put on here because this thing's been dump, it's been dumping water out, and it's going to dump it out right there in my area. But maybe I got another one over there. I may just borrow that one just temporarily, put it over here, keep it from washing that low because it's washed that down so much. It's kind of starting to undermine the driveway a little bit, and I put me in a impromptu little. Uh, pad for my garbage can to park on. I had it sitting on a couple I'll start going around then a couple uh, little pieces of wood which looks redneck as hell so that I cleaned out the trimmed this bush up and cleaned out around it and stuff so I ain't putting any, I ain't putting any more of this damn gravel because I mean it's fine but this stuff's expensive. Too expensive for me. Anyway, I'm going to do that, and coming up, i got to mulch in here, get some new uh, weed stuff. You know, that almost looks like there's one of those bushes trying to come back up there. Hmm. It's that privet stuff. It's that psycho dog there. It's that private stuff and you just about can't kill that thing unless they die on their own. I'm gonna level some stuff out here. I got a, I got a hole in the yard over there I've been patching up. And, uh, working on that today. I stepped in it yesterday. I was mowing the grass and never broke my foot. So. All right. Well, I was on the, if it's free, it's for me bandwagon now. Just picked him up some grills and stuff. Real nice one, too. For free. And he's, I think he's cleaned it up over there. Sound like he's giving her hell with the leaf blower vacuum. He likes that thing. That thing runs all the time. <laughs> There's Lyle's grill. Isn't that nice? Zero dollars. Just gas to go get it. Well, we've got this next shed up on its feet. It's just stuck together. I'll have to go screw this frame together like I did the other one. Cause these things are that <laughs> they interference fit crap. That don't that don't work. So I'll have to get the tarp put on it. 
I'll do that maybe tomorrow, but it's supposed to rain tomorrow, I think, so. Anyway, the roof looks a little questionable up there. But, so, I'll come tomorrow or the next day after that and, like I said, screw it together because this they'll come apart. It'll, they'll pull apart. I won't park the car under one of them without it being screwed together, so. I'll do that and get the legs lined up and the anchors in. I've got temporarily anchored. Got one over there and one out there and <laughs> one of these excuses of an anchor. <laughs> Look at this thing, man. You tell me this would hold something down. It's all going straight rod. Yeah, that, that's going to keep it from going somewhere. Bird land on it the wrong way. That thing can pull out. But. So anyway, here's what I think I'm going to do. Well, let me tell you how I ended up with two of these. If you ever try to buy, uh, the one that goes on that tarp, the top goes on that one, lasted about three years. And three and a half years, something like that. And it came apart finally. And so I needed another top for it. Well, the thing is, I sell a top. You can order it through Amazon, but they're like as much for, as for a whole shed. So. If I had a shed here local, another one of those shelter logics. I think I got it at Tractor Supply this time. I got the first one at Academy Outdoors, which I'm not sure cares anymore. But I thought, well, that's crazy. I'll just go buy another shed and get the top off of it, put the top on that one, and then I'll have an extra shed. And you can go buy 20 by 30, uh, 10 by 20 tarps, you know, for a lot less than 100 bucks for one of them. So. Now, I don't know what this one is. I don't know if this one is a, this may be a 10 by 20, but I'm not sure I'm going to use this one because it's kind of gotten in bad shape from sitting. I might. I'll see. I'm pretty cheap, so if it looks like it's usable, I may just do that. I think this is one I got from Walmart, but that's all that is. That's the only difference is that one comes down over the sides, so I don't care about that, so basically for the you know same money I got a spare a spare extra replacement top and another shed it's a little bit more money for it I guess so I put this one up and I'll use this for something but I cleared it with my neighbors it'd be okay to, they wouldn't mind me putting this up and they said it's no problem so anyway I gotta do a little bit more lining up here to get it straight but that's okay it's kind of over too far away from the house, but hopefully it'll hold up pretty good. You can see how these things are kind of, yeah, that's okay, but like I said, without it being bolted together, it's kind of flimsy. So that one, I gotta, I gotta work on the legs on that other one over there because it's got to, I'm gonna have to untension it and move the legs out because it's kind of, that one is kind of, in a little. So you guys were asking me something. You might have called me on, I guess it was a while back, somebody did about Weed Eater Man. You remember who Weed Eater Man was? That was a guy down at the other house that used to run the Weed Eater all the time. And you never really saw him because all the shrubs and stuff. And just on and on with the Weed Eater. And I think we've got a replacement for Weed Eater Man. But I think it's Leaf Blower Man now. Now, I know that's a big burden of fame to put on my neighbor. So y'all all don't barrage him at one time and ask for autographs and hound him and stalk him or anything like that because he's an unknown celebrity right now. But I think he's going to be Leaf Bowler Man, a.k.a. Lyle. Well, let me just add something to that, if you would. Now, I don't, just, I don't bestow that title just to anybody. It's taken me, you know five years or so to find someone that's worthy of taking the mantle from Weed Eater Man. You know, there's people that have came and went, you know. Mr. C was in the running for a little bit, but he didn't make it. And some other people around here, you know, they just didn't have what it took to be consistent and to do something as consistently and repeatedly and as humorously as the person I've nominated to replace Weed Eater Man. So, 
Of course, like I said, he will not be called weed eater man. He'll be leaf blower man. But I just want you to know that I didn't, you know, while I've been doing all this other crap around here that I do around my house, it's never left my mind that I need to be looking for a suitable figure to, you know, take the take the title. And I think it's happened. I'm glad all y'all are here for that to be seen. It's a monumental occasion. It's a momentous occasion. You all may laugh at me for saying this, but, you know, I talk about the residents. Well, look right here on the Madison County, Alabama Public Works page. Go over here. Right on top. There it is. Was I wrong? Huh? Was I wrong? No. They know what people live here. The resident. That's who we live here. Well, that was pretty calm, but a couple robins just got after a blackbird up here. Starling or something. And they've been dive bombing him and running him off. <laughs> Giving him hell. There he goes right there, I think. Anyway, I was out here cleaning the yard up because something happened out here. We had an event here with the weather uh, stuff going on the other night. And not sure what happened. I think either had a microburst or something happened. But it took some stuff out of the top of this tree. This tree ain't looking too healthy back here. Look up in the top up there. It's definitely got some dead limb action going. And it's still alive. It's not dead, but it's got definitely got some. See, that one's got something like a tumor on it or something, whatever you call that. It's got a little bit of mistletoe. And I know that sounds so sweet and innocent, mistletoe, but that's a parasite. That's what you see growing in trees during the winter when all the rest of the tree is dead. And you see that in it. That's mistletoe, and it's a parasite. It's not, not something you need to have a kith down there. I made a video on this before a long time ago, but of course that was totally ignored, I guess. But anyway, what's interesting about this and kind of ominous is that whatever broke off this tree hit the ground at high speed because it's driven into the ground right there. And I think Lyles' tree did the same thing. Look at that log over there that's driven into the ground. <laughs> and it's been a couple of days. He hadn't even seen that. So... Looks like we both got problems here. I ain't gonna deal with that. If this tree's having limbs shedding out of it, I'm gonna have to call the landlord and see if they'll have the tree surgeons or something come out and deal with it. This tree's been here a long time. It's probably it was probably planted when this house was built, about 45 years old, so it may be getting towards the end of its lifespan anyway. Well, not really, but it's probably just not. Yeah, the neighbors back there just had a big argument. I'm of the opinion that people are getting more and more under stress as time goes on. That's why I see all these arguments and stuff, stuff like that going on. I think we're going downhill. I think we're devolving as humans. I think we've reached, at some point in the past, we've reached our pinnacle of discipline and pride and um, whatever you want to call it, but I think we're going back down the other side of the hill here. More arguments, more lack of good judgment, more just acting like assholes. You know, pretty soon I think eventually, give another 100 years, 200 years, we'll be back, I don't know, halfway back to caveman maybe. Alright, there's my tree story. Thanks for watching. Yard Wars. It's happening now. It's real. So if you guys have watched my channels for a while, you know that my neighbors are across the street spend a lot of time in their yard. And as you can see, they're still fighting to get grass to grow. The struggle is real. But uh, you know what I decided this year? I'm gonna meet the challenge. So, got plants in. We're working on our bed up here. 
Still got a lot of ways to go. Just putting in another round of plants. I'm doing the coleus today. Got my rose bush. Got my plant that usually stays indoor over the winter. Some flowers. I got another uh, flat of flowers to go in. Got the topsoil. Gonna be doing some mulching. So, got my yard cart out here. See, I've lived here for several years now, and I've essentially I've essentially never touched the yard except to mow it. And this grass has fortunately grown pretty well all on its own, but I've also pretty much ignored it. So you can see I've been doing some mulching and filling in the low spots. So she's going to be blindsided. She's not going to know what's here. She doesn't know that I'm actually able to do this stuff. She just probably assumed that I was another no good transient renter which I can understand that philosophy because the people that lived in this house before I did I was told that one of them actually lived in the garage and would sit in there and play loud music and drink beer and was trash all over the yard so you know from there to here it's only been going up so we're gonna find out this year whether she's going to be able to meet the challenge or she's going to fade and crack under pressure right now she unfortunately is not successful with the yard but you know it, even when you're in a competition like this you wish your adversary well but you don't want them to win so I wish her well but I don't want her to win so it looks like a nice normal peaceful street but there's a war being fought here it's a war of plants and soil and shovels and hoes and rakes and leaf blowers and weed eaters and fertilizer and several trips to Lowe's so when the dust settles the seven dust settles there will only be one winner here on this street 